My name is Robert Crime, and I'm a detective. This, this is the story of my redemption. Hey, Crime, got a case for you. It's the case of the rubber glove killer. You're the only detective who hasn't uh, attempted to crack it. You're our last chance. The rubber glove killer was a serial killer responsible for a recent string of murders. All of them were similar, with multiple stab wounds and a rubber glove somewhere on the body. Every other detective on the force wasn't able to figure this one out. So I was the last guy they came to to crack the case and catch this asshole. You gonna do it? Yeah, I'll take it. Hold up a second. You shouldn't go alone. You don't know what this guy's capable of. No, I work alone now. Crime. Come on, it's been a whole year since the incident. Don't you think it's time for a new partner? I said I work alone. Now, I used to have a partner. His name was Jimmy Punishment, and he was my best friend. Together, we were the best on the force, solving all the cases and putting criminals in the slammer left and right. We were unstoppable. We were crime and punishment. Until one day. We were... We were just hanging out after another case. You know, just fooling around and having fun in the morgue. I... I didn't realize how dangerous it could be. Little did I know that that day my life would change, and not for the better. I tried to help him, but it was too late. He was already gone. Without my partner, I haven't been able to solve a single goddamn case. This one was my last chance to get back into solving crimes. The body was fresh. His expression was peaceful, like it was frozen in time. The first thing I noticed was the calling card. A rubber glove stretched under the head of this poor sucker. The whole scene was disgusting, like the satanic sacrificing of a chicken. I started going through the guy's stuff. You know, for evidence. One leather wallet. Empty. One peanut butter sandwich. <coughs> Poorly made. One juice box. Also empty. One family photo. I thought I was out of luck, at a dead end. I couldn't find anything that I could get a lead on. 
but then I found it. It looked like the business card to a bar, and it was the only thing I had to follow. With my new lead, I started to leave when I remembered the old saying, the criminal always returns to the scene of the crime. Hey crime. I'm just about to start cleaning up. How's the case going? Got him. Case closed. Ryan, what are you doing? Followed the gold rule. He showed up to see the crime, which means he did it. Case closed. Listen, crime. It's not 100% factual. Plus, this is Leslie, our coroner. You know, he works with you on the cases, does the autopsies, helps you. Damn it, I was sure he was the guy. Well, he's not, so let him go. Okay, thank you. Now, crime, we gotta talk. This report from the crime scene says that you reportedly ate half the evidence and then you stole from the body. Don't worry, Chief. It's all part of my investigative method. And look, I've got a lead. It's a bar on the west side of town called the Doctor's Inn. All right, you need to follow this up then. But first, interrogation one is the last remaining family member of the last victim. I need you to question them, see if they know anything. Sure thing, Chief. You? All right, bub, you knew this guy, right? Can you tell me anything about what happened to him last night? Come on, man, you live with the guy. There's gotta be something you can tell me about him. How about this? If you tell me something, some treats. Alright, how about this? If you don't start talking, the treats are gonna get it. Oh, you're good. Hey, couldn't get anything out of him. He's gone quiet. You can let him go. But I want this creep on watch at all times, just in case. You got it. With the interrogation done, I set off on my only lead. The place was average at best. The only thing out of ordinary about this bar was that it was strangely medical themed. I had to go speak to the bartender. Those guys know everything about their bars, so this one was bound to know where the man I was looking for was. What will be big guy? Scotch. On the rocks. So, what can you tell me about this place? Well, as you can probably tell, we mainly serve doctors. Interesting. Say, if you needed me to point out the meanest, most ruthless guy in this bar, who would it be? He goes by the name of the surgeon, and if I were you, I wouldn't want to tussle with the likes of him. Don't worry. Tussling's my middle name. And there he was, my first suspect. The guy looked nasty. He stunk of pride and medical fluid, and his hands were covered in scars. Probably from all the surgical tools he used, or the murder weapons he wielded. And his face? Well, let's not talk about his face. What do you want? The name's Crime, Robert Crime. Mm -hmm. And I'm here to ask you a couple questions. What do you want to know? <laughs> Where were you earlier tonight at? You know, we really don't like pigs coming into our bars. Yeah, we don't like coppers coming in here and sticking up our toif. Look, fellas, I'm sure we can work something out. <laughs>
table manners. Oh no, he, he got me. <laughs> Even though I beat those gangsters, the goddamn surgeon got away. The next step was to go back to the station and see if we had any dirt on this guy. Hey, Fran. How's the case going? Good. Good, good. That reminds me of a case I once had in North Dakota. You know, I forgot my snowshoes that year, and, you know, it was tough to walk around. It was a bit And you know the funny thing? The only thing that they ever found was a shoelace and the guy's spine. You believe it? Oh, by the way, the coroner has the autopsy report for you, okay? All right. All right, great. Hello, Mr. Crime. I got the autopsy report for you. Now, since I was going to be talking to this guy, and since I was suspicious as all hell, I decided to ask him a couple questions. What do you got? Well, the characteristics of this one are correlated with all the other past cases. Multiple stab wounds, a rubber glove, and... Yeah, 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 I know all that. Say, what do you like to do, you know, outside of work? Well, my friends and I like to go to, like, a bar or something. Interesting. Say, got any hobbies? Interests? Well, I've always been interested in uh, anatomy and stuff. But hey, why are we even talking about this? Anyway, the victim bled out and died only an hour before he was found. Also, the victim died there in the parking lot. So he wasn't moved from the crime scene location. All right then, uh, thanks. Uh, what's your name again? It's Leslie. <laughs> See you later. With this new information, I had even more reason to try to find the surgeon. To do this, I'd have to pay the boys in the computer room a little visit. He had a pretty big nose. Uh... Some thick eyebrows and uh, some nasty scars. I think I got it. It's perfect. There's only one person who matches this in our database. His name is Dr. Albert Johnson, a.k.a. the surgeon. Even his name sounds guilty. Luckily for you, he's right over on 4th Street. Perfect. Thanks again. Grind. They found another body in the park. Come on, Chief. The night air was frigid, and the moon shined bright in the darkness of the forest. Floodlights were blaring right at the dead body. Even the fresh smell of pine couldn't cover up the stench of all the blooded entrails. This case was slowly spiraling out of control. Looking at the body, it seemed like something was missing. It was the calling card. The rubber glove wasn't there. That sick bastard. After looking over all the evidence there, I didn't find anything new. I needed one more piece just to put it all together. I just needed to end it all, and I was desperate. I would take anything, a hair follicle, a skin cell, even a stool sample, anything to connect a name to this murder spree.
But I was stumped. Until... The surgeon. I knew it was him. It looked like this case was almost closed. I just had to track this guy down and bring him in. Looks like I'm all done here. You gonna pack things up here? No, just wait for it. Looks like the next park this guy's gonna be going to will be... Parkatory. That was brilliant, sir. I don't get it. It's a play on words. Parkatory, you know, like the park as in where we are, and purgatory, is that guy's dead over there? Oh, uh, what's purgatory? I was just wondering. I found myself waiting outside the medical offices of Albert Johnson, MD. Or if you want to call him by his murderer name, the surgeon. And there he was. In order to catch him, I needed to handle this carefully and quietly. Hey you, stop! And the chase was on. What the hell are you doing here? I'm here to take you in. You're the rubber love killer. What? No, I'm not. Then why did you run when I said to stop out there? I got Paige to come back to my office. I didn't even hear you. Then why did you run around like that instead of going straight to your office? Well, I've got to get exercise somehow. Why did you run away back at the bar? That was a shootout, man. If I didn't get out of there, I would have gotten shot. Okay, then explain this. This scalpel found on a dead body, and it just so happens to be the exact same one you had at the bar last night. Hey, every doctor I know uses that brand of scalpel. Plus, I got an alibi. I've been with my patient all along. You can just check his charts. I've been with him throughout the murders. You can just ask him. Oh, we'll see about that. Hello? I'm a detective. I'm here to ask you a couple questions about your surgeon here. Um, okay. Now, 
Do you know where your surgeon was last night at 8 p.m. and at 11 p.m.? At 8, he was performing surgery on me, but then I think he came back at 11 to check if I was okay. It seemed like he was telling the truth, but I had to make sure. Don't lie to me, you son of a bitch. <laughs> I'm not, sir, I swear. <laughs> Tell me the truth, God damn it. I'm telling the truth. <laughs> okay, I believe you. See? You're clear. Sorry for the inconvenience. It's alright, officer. I guess I understand. And there I was, the dreaded dead end. My only lead was gone and I was back to where I started, with nothing. My last chance that I'd messed it up. After this, they would never give me another case. I would be out of a job and out of luck. I was truly a cop with nothing left to lose. All I had left was this nagging feeling, like I'd gotten it all right the first time. First time. First time. First time. First time. <sighs> The evidence was all there, right under my nose. The scalpel. The business card. Well, my friends and I like to go to like a bar or something. The fact that he's a doctor. Well, as you can probably tell, we mainly serve doctors. The fact that he's used to dealing with dead bodies. Well, I've always been interested in uh, anatomy and stuff. And of course, the goddamn rubber gloves. I had everything I needed on him. It was time to end this. I know everything, Leslie. I know you're the killer. Now put your hands up. Crime? What the hell's going on here? He's the killer, Chief. I've got all the evidence on him. Oh, God, not this again. I told you. He works for us. He can't be the killer. Bravo, Crime. You cracked the case. I killed those people. Seriously? Crime was right the first time? Yeah, he was. And you should have listened to him. I told you. I can't believe this. This is just... Uh... Uh, uh... Not so fast, crime. This doodle has cyanide in it. One move and he gets it. I just want to know one thing, Leslie. Why'd you do it? I've always had a sick obsession with dead bodies, so naturally I became a coroner. But you and your partner started solving cases so quick. I had no bodies to examine, so I had to put a stop to it. I put the banana peel there. I set it up so he would die. You did it. You killed Jimmy. Yes, and I'll do it again. Because it worked. You couldn't solve any cases without him. I had all the dead bodies I could ever want. But eventually it wasn't enough to satisfy my sick cravings. So I started to kill people myself so they could be examined by me. And no one ever catch me. Because I always gave the detectives wrong, phony information during the autopsy. I was invincible. That is until you decided to arrest me on a hunch and ruin everything. You conniving little psychopath. You're gonna get what's coming to you. Oh yeah? How? 
like this. Ah. Grime, how'd you know I had a prosthetic hand? I didn't. Well, you did it. You cracked the case. You're back in the game, Grime. I finally did it. I single-handedly brought down a serial killer, avenged my partner, and reclaimed my crime-solving skills. I proved my worth and became the best again. It was the sweet taste of victory, and it felt good. Ryan, Ryan, how'd you get him? How'd you get him? Make a statement. Make a statement. My name is Robert Crime, and I'm back. Hey, crime, get ready for your next case.